Hello and welcome to News Click and today we are going to be talking about COVID-19 or the coronavirus disease. To talk more about this, we have with us Prabir Purkaista. Prabir, so the, the number of cases has crossed 110,000 and uh, there are some bright spots of course, the number of cases in China is still showing a steady decline. On the other hand, there is Europe which is becoming, which is increasingly becoming a hot spot and then there is a great unknown that's the United States with the number of cases. So before we go into each of the regions specifically, could you talk a bit about the global picture as of today? Well, as of today, what you said is right. China figures are continuously coming down. So it's clearly mm -hmm. controlled the infections. Right. It's also true that Hubei province, mm -hmm. which is the one which was majorly hit, even there the numbers are continuously falling. Right. In fact, they are figure now numbering less than 100 right. per day. So what we are seeing is that the things that China did work, and we'll come back to this later. But as you said, Europe has now exploded mm -hmm. with Italy really being the first major uh, country, right. which is uh, not only uh, seeing a huge blow up of numbers, but also number of deaths have increasing rapidly. Right. Now what that seems to show is that the uh, it was the disease was really not tracked early enough, mm -hmm. and that's why the serious cases now right. are coming to, coming to the hospitals, and the death rates are so much high. Right. Now that expensive, extensive testing is taking place in mm -hmm. Italy, we see, as you can see the, the, from the details, Italy is now declared a lockdown. Right. Lockdown is not only Lombardy but also other regions. Mm -hmm. So they are following what China had done, which is locking down. Uh, uh, Wuhan, cordon sanitaire around Wuhan and its major uh, suburbs. Right. So they seem to be following the same path. Mm -hmm. They have declared a lockdown. There is virtually very similar provisions are being used over there. Right, right. And they have been spooked by the fact that yesterday both the death rates and the new infections really spiked very right, high. Right. And this has been a continuous increase that has been taking place. Italy is one country which is showing every day bigger and bigger numbers. Right. Now, South Korea, we saw this earlier, the numbers were spiking up, but after that it has now come down. Right. After the expense, extensive testing mm -hmm. which they have done, South Koreans in fact have been able to test at least 10,000 per day, right. and they say they will increase up to 20,000. They have drive-in tests where you can actually drive in, give your tests and go. So all of this seems to be the, uh, the measures which right. are really required. Right. More than that, there is now a clear indication that's not the question, it's not really an issue of uh, closing air travel, which is what Mr. Trump still keeps on talking about, mm -hmm. how great we did by stopping air travel, right. but really social distancing, right. which breaks the transmissibility of the disease. And that's what brought, brought the numbers down in China. in China. So if you look at it, what China had done, they had reduced transmissibility mm -hmm. by social distancing. Mm -hmm. And that's what now Italy is trying to do as right. well. I think that's the only way right. that you can really tame the virus mm -hmm. because you don't have a vaccine for the next 12 months at least. So the only way you can do it is social distancing, right. cutting down all travels, cutting down social the meetings, large scale right. meetings, events, all of this, schools, universities being shut down, cinema halls being shut down, right. all places where people can come and infect large numbers. Right. So that is one uh, element of it. Mm -hmm. And the second element, which is also something that Italy needs to do, which China has done, which is intensive care support really needs to extend itself right. and you have to have the beds which are available in hospitals. The public health system has to be geared up for this mm -hmm. and that's a challenge Italy is right now right. facing. And Italy is only the, in some senses, maybe the tip of the iceberg because France and Germany are also seeing a huge rise in the number of cases. There's Spain, of course, and the UK is also seeing a slight, slow but steady increase nonetheless. So what we're looking at perhaps is the fact that the whole of the European continent, which is which has, uh, there are no real borders, there's a lot of free movement among these countries. It, the possibility of an explosion is quite high. You see, the European Union mm -hmm. is the, the really what you are seeing. And therefore, Germany, Spain, France were much more tightly uh, coupled with right. Italy, right. both in terms of back and forth tourists, mm -hmm. travel and so on. This is where, where you are likely to see the immediate secondary effect mm -hmm. of what's happening in Italy. 
also Belgium, right. Luxembourg, no, the, the, you know, Sweden, all these countries are there. But the major figures that we are now tending to see is like next is Germany and France. Right. France and Germany both seem to be taking the earlier trajectory of Italy. So the distance is about three to five days. What's happened in Italy could happen here. So how do you stop it? The stopping of it is now, right now, in mm. Europe, they need to increase what China did, mm. social distancing. Second, they need to lock down parts of Italy or any other part when you get a cluster. The third thing they have to do is extensive testing. Right. So you in the community, now it's community spread in all these countries, including UK. Mm. So you need to find where the hot spots are, the clusters are, mm -hmm. and interdict those clusters. That you can do only when you've done extensive testing. Right. Unfortunately, Europe, I don't know how they're faring, but it doesn't look like they're testing on the scale that China was able, China to. Was able to do. And South Korea is doing now. I right. think South Korea also has done very extensive testing. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of things that all countries will need to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the European Union is right. next challenge is. Plus, as I said, the hospital uh, in infrastructure, right. because the number of deaths, particularly for the older people, mm -hmm. are high. Right. And this is what you are going to see if the hospital infrastructure, particularly the intensive care support, is not geared up. Right. And uh, here we have the great unknown, as we refer to, which is the United States. And the response there from the government has been a mix of confusion, bravado, and uh, a lot of inefficiency also, including a flaw in the testing at the very early stage itself. So, do you see the possibility that actually there are a lot more number of cases in the U.S. which have not been, uh, which have not come out yet because of lack of testing? Well, as you said, it's a great unknown at the moment mm. because even the public health experts and we have various experts on record saying unless we test, mm. we do not know. Right. And obviously, this is a part of now uh, the community spread that we are seeing. Right. Almost uh, most of the major uh, areas are seeing clusters. Mm -hmm. Now, if this clusters, Washington state was a clear cluster outside right. Seattle or suburbs of Seattle. You're seeing the cluster in New York now. Now you see the cluster in California. California. So all of these are now seeing more and more clusters right. coming up. Right. So it's definitely a community spread. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a report which was about, now about two to three days old, which says that Americans managed to test only 2,000 people. Mm -hmm. Now, that is in the six weeks since the CDC sent out the defective test kits and then also further to that, whatever the tests they have now said others can also do. Right. In spite of that, they claim there's only 2,000 tests which have been done. Now, if extensive testing cannot be done, we have no clue the number of people who might be there, right. how many people are affected, what are the new clusters developing, and they don't seem to be moving in the direction of social distancing, lockdowns, and all of these mm -hmm. things, because they have claimed these are all authoritarian measures the right. Chinese did, it's not required, and as Mr. Trump said, that we have done very well because mm -hmm. you closed our air traffic with China. Mm -hmm. But as we know, now the traffic is from Italy, it's from France, it's right. from Germany, right. and they don't seem to be testing on the borders these people coming in either. So with all of this, US has become really the next possible case. And one small indicator of that, that unless we know the number of people, we do not know deaths to infection ratio. And the US also seems to show compared to the numbers infected, a higher death. Right. Now, why that is so could be due to various reasons, but that's the unexplained data over there. Right. Right. And the fact they've tested so little mm -hmm. would seem to indicate mm -hmm. that there is a huge gap between the number infected right. and the number tested, tested. and found infected. Right. Last point, I really have no idea why they rejected the WHO test and decided to redo their own tests. Now they've weakened their testing instead of the three uh, genomic markers which the WHO test looks for, which also CDC used to look for earlier, they're now looking at only two markers. And I still don't know why they have not been able to replicate mm -hmm. what, for instance, South Korea has done, what even India, with our limited facilities, we seem to have done more tests right. than what United States has done. That's a very sad commentary on CDC, which till now was recognized as the world's leader in combating infectious diseases. I think it's a combination of the fact they think it's a Chinese disease. Right. And therefore, it will not really come to US. That's one part of it. And the second is the complete, the gutting, 
the, of the CDC that has taken place over the last 10, 15 years, and particularly during the Trump administration, where, as Trump argued, that what's the point of spending so much on preventive right. uh, issues? Mm -hmm. We should only fight when we need to fight. So we should really cater to an expansion when we need it, not before. Right. This is the just-in-time philosophy of capitalism. But the problem is, when you talk of epidemics, you have to do, deal with an epidemic before it has occurred. Absolutely. It's not treating them in the hospital, that's the issue. Right. That's really the epidemic. Of course, there is an argument that this is the American way of dealing with high health care costs for the old, because they can be effectively culled right. if this epidemic takes place. I don't believe that is so, because the people in head of all of this, including Mr. Trump, are pretty old. So I don't think that is really the philosophy. But yes, the kind of health care system, mm -hmm. the private health care system, insurance-driven health care system, maybe that does not have an incentive to stop epidemic, right. but that has an incentive to only fleece the people right. uh, when, when they get sick. Right. Thank you so much, Prabir. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click.